everyone, and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. When I have posted videos about the Zoom R20 multi-track recorder, I've received several questions or a series of questions, all kind of related to what sort of media do I use when I'm recording with the R20? Uh, what size media should I use? Does it make a difference between an SD card or a flash drive? And with that, do I have to format the cards or the flash drives in any particular way? So after using this device for about a year now, I thought I would just share what my experiences have been using a variety of media types, whether it's an SD card or a USB flash drive with the R20 and let you know what I've kind of found. So if you don't know, on the right side of the R20, there is a slot for a full size SD card. There's also a USB type C port that you can use for mini controllers, but also for USB flash drives. Now you could use either the flash drives or the SD cards to store your projects. You can also store different uh, audio tracks on there, whether they're mono tracks or stereo tracks, and then import those files into working projects as you're working on different songs. It doesn't matter if you want to use the SD card or the flash drive. Now, in my experience, I think that you should use the SD card slot. It's just a lot neater and you don't have anything kind of hanging off the end of the R20 that you can accidentally damage when you're maybe moving this thing or shifting around on your, your desk. The other thing that you want to potentially do is leave the um, USB port open in case you want to use a MIDI controller. For SD cards, you can use up to one terabyte SD cards with the Zoom R20. Now I haven't tested it with an, uh, a one terabyte card. I've only actually gone up to a 256 gigabyte card, but I've used plenty of all the way down to one gigabyte. Um, and usually I'm using a 64 gigabyte card or a 128 gigabyte card as my two working cards when I'm recording with the R20. When you use the SD cards, I, I kind of recommend that you just have a dedicated, at least one dedicated SD card that you're simply going to use for recording with the R20. And that's going to be the main purpose of that card. Don't use it for like also taking pictures with cameras or whatnot. Just keep it to the R20. And the first time that you use it, you can go through a formatting process right uh, directly on the R20 to format the SD card. Now, when you format the SD card with the Zoom R20, uh, the one thing that it'll do is it'll change the name of the card. So after you format it, it'll change it to R20 underscore SD. So that's what your card will then be called. Additionally, how it gets formatted by the R20 depends on the size of the card. So if you have a card that is one gigabyte up to 32 gigabytes, it will format it into FAT32. If you use a card that's greater than 32, so really if you're starting off at a 64 gigabyte card or higher, it will then use XFAT as the formatting for that particular card. So if you're bringing a card over and you wanna use it, um, you can already have it formatted into FAT32 or XFAT and it should work if you're bringing a card in on some other different type of uh, formatting. I don't know if it'll work or not. But if you just go through the formatting process directly on the R20 with your SD card, you should be in good shape. Now, while the R20 will format your SD card for you, it will not format your USB flash drive if you do want to use a USB flash drive. So if you're using a USB flash drive, I've tried a whole bunch of them and all of them seem to work except for one. So in my experience, so there's probably others that uh, do not work out there, but I've tried a whole bunch. And the only one that did not work for me is by Kingston, and this is part of their uh, Data Traveler series. So I got this on sale uh, this past fall of 2022, and I've used this plenty of times. It's worked just fine for me on my Windows-based computers, um, and I've even plugged it into my car to update the audio system in my car, and it worked just fine. It's a USB 3.0 uh, flash drive, but for whatever reason, I get an error that's thrown on the R20 when I try to import files from this Kingston USB stick. It just simply won't recognize that this thing exists. So in a similar fashion to the SD cards, what you want to stick with is either FAT32, especially if you're, using a, if you're using a flash drive that's less than 32 gigabytes in size. I recommend using FAT32 as the uh, formatting for the cards. So you could do that on your computer and make sure it's set up that way. And if you do it, it, it should be read by the R20, no problem or if you have something that's greater than 32 gigabytes. So you're talking about typically 64 gigabytes or greater, 
I would recommend that you format it in XFAT. And if you do that, it should work as well with the R20. If you format into NTFS, which is typically like a Windows file formatting system, it's, it doesn't get recognized by the R20. So stick with FAT32 or with XFAT as your formatting for your USB sticks, and you should have no problem with them working with the R20. But there's probably a few oddball brands out there that for whatever reason, uh, it just doesn't seem to work with the R20. So a lot of the questions that I get is I'm using this brand USB stick or this brand SD card and it's not working. If it's not working, the first thing that I recommend is, is just try a different card, try a different USB stick. Make sure it's, it's a different brand, different model, and see if that works. The most obvious place where you're having an error is something to do with the, the media itself and not the R20. Now, if you put three different types of media in there, different brands, and it's not working, there's a good chance that something's corrupted on your R20 and maybe you want to look at getting that repaired or replaced. Like I said earlier, I prefer to re just record everything, all my projects on the SD card that I leave in the R20. It's my dedicated SD card just for the R20. But a lot of times I'll have maybe a short WAV file, a mono track or a, a stereo track that I have on my computer and I want to import it into a project. And what I typically do is use a USB flash drive for that. Now you could use a USB flash drive that natively has USB-C on one end, if one of their ports, a male end, so you can actually just plug that directly into the R20, or you can use a typical uh, flash drive that has USB-A, and then just use one of those USB-A to C converters, and that seems to work just fine with the R20 as well. So that's the way you can import your files with the flash drive into a project that's being saved on the SD card. So if you just wanna bring over one mono track, for example, I do that often and, and it works. Um, just fine. Now, when people do that, one thing that you want to pay attention to is you can import your files from either the SD card or the uh, USB stick. So you can take the SD card out if you want, put it into your computer, and drag some files over that you want to bring into your projects when you're working on the R20. But the file structure between the SD cards and the flash drives is a little bit different, and where you put your files matters. So people have posted comments and questions that they can't import their files because the R20 doesn't find them. Well, it's because you have to put them in the right folder. So if you want to put mono or stereo tracks onto an SD card and then later import them into different projects, you want to find the audio folder on the SD card. But the audio folder on the SD card is going to be in the root directory. So just straight from if you put it into your computer and you look at it, it's just straight looking. You click on the, the SD card, the folder, that first folder you're going to see there is audio. You're also going to see a projects folder, but you drop in your um, mono or stereo tracks that you want to import later, drop them into the audio folder on that SD card. For the USB stick though, it's a little bit different formatting. So the USB stick, you don't have an audio folder in the root directory of the uh, flash drive. So for the flash drive, you're going to have first a folder that's going to say zoom underscore R20. That's the first folder that you have to click. And then from there, you'll have folders that will be projects and then an audio folder. So the audio folder is one more level down in the hierarchy system on a flash drive compared to an SD card. So drop in your mono or your stereo tracks that you want to import later into that audio folder that's one sub-level down under zoom underscore R20 when you're using a flash stick. If you want more information about how to import mono or stereo tracks into your working projects, I'll uh, put a link to a video that I made about that in the description below and put it up here. Finally, the last thing that people ask me is a common question, well, how big of an SD card should I get? How big of a flash drive should I get? Again, recommend the SD cards. You know, you really don't need a huge SD card. This thing is recording in 24-bit, 44.1 uh, kilohertz sample size so or sample rate. So they're not giant files. Um, I've been using a 64 gigabyte card, a 128 gigabyte card. If you just get one of those, you should be able to use it for a long time, put a lot of projects on there, and it'll suit you just fine. If you want to get a 256 card, 256 gigabyte card, you know, go right ahead. Uh, but I really don't think that unless you're like, you know, a home studio, and I don't know why you'd have an R20 necessarily to run a home studio for like as, as a commercial business, maybe you get a one terabyte card at that point in time. But, you know, for the most part, like a 64 gigabyte card or 128 gigabyte card, not expensive. I'd probably start there if you're just buying an R20. And I think you're going to be perfectly happy with that. They don't have to be really fast cards. Here's a 
uh, SD card that's a little bit faster that I use for my cameras. I've also used it in the R20 and it's fine, but you don't have to get anything that's overly fast, a, a typical SD card that you, you know, would buy um, in, in 2022, 2023 should be absolutely fine in terms of its speed for working with the R20. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video here. If you have further questions about what kind of media that you want to use, size, or you're having formatting issues, go ahead and leave a question or a comment uh, below in this video. I'll get to them the best that I can as quickly as I can. So with that, hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time. All right. Bye.